Hello and welcome to another Spasta Kangaroo screen cast. Today I'm going to be showing you some of the new features in Blender 2.66, which you can download on blender.org since it just released today. And um, you can go to this page right here to see all the features, and I'll be quickly going over how to use them. Make sure to request in the comments below if you want me to go into a more detailed uh, description of each tool. So let's start out with dynamic topology. Um, and dynamic topology is basically um, a feature that add um, topology where it's needed in the mesh. So when you're f for when you're sculpting. So let me go to sculpt mode. And right now, if I sculpt, I'm gonna just pull out the geometry that currently exists when I try to sculpt. And in the older versions, what you do is you would add a modifier and add a multi-res modifier, and then you subdivide, but that subdivides the entire mesh, and that's not exactly what we want. So, if you press T, bring up your toolbar, and click on Topology, and click Enable Dynamic, you'll now get Dynamic Topology, and when you sculpt, it'll add Topology where you need it to create the shape that you want. So if um, we go into wireframe mode here and I start sculpting, you can see it's adding topology where it's needed to make this mesh the right shape. And this is great. This is really awesome because um, now you don't have to worry about levels. I can zoom in right now and just add more detail right up close and you can zoom in as far as you want as much detail as you want so this is an incredibly useful tool so i've already used this on a few of my own um models if you follow me on twitter i've done like one of my first face uh sculpts so yeah it's it's a really great tool and it's super easy to use um if you turn up the detail size you can get uh, more topology so if i set this up to 90 that's three times the amount of topology and now, when we zoom in, oh wait, I'm sorry, if you set it down, so, um, it'll add more topology. So now it's super fine detail. And then there's smooth shading, um, to just get smooth shading on it, otherwise that doesn't work. And this will, uh, I think, simplify the mesh. So that's the new dynamic sculpting feature. Now, let's look at uh, one of the cool new UI improvements, which is this fade in right here. Um, in older versions of Blender, this would bump the entire screen and shrink it down, but now it'll just fade over top and you can see behind it, which is awesome. So all you have to do to enable that is press Control alt u to edit your user settings. Go to System and click region overlap now um if you want to see behind your window you'll have to go to your themes and go down to 3d view and um, on background edit the slider and you can adjust the um, alpha of your toolbar so if you set this to nothing and uncheck show background um, you'll get a very clear background. Wait, which one is it? This one? Yeah, this one. If you um, set this to zero, you'll get zero background, and, or you can set it to maximum background. So um, this is just a nice visual feature, and um, it feels less jarring when you open up a toolbar or properties bar. So another cool feature that they added was copy and paste among multiple blend files. So if I were to add um, a monkey here, and I'm just going to make it different than the default monkey so uh, we know that this one is unique. Okay, so um, <laughs> now we've got this crazy Suzanne with a hat. And if we copy this, copy selection to buffer, Control C or Command C, enter a new file and press Control V. You will get this uh, object in a separate uh, file. 
And you can also go to a uh, different blend file. And I'll just open this one. And I can paste it from here. And this is a really great feature. Um, instead of having to always uh, append or link from your old files, you can now just copy it to the buffer. Another feature that they added, um, in case you can't already see this in the recording, um, there's a slight uh, gradient in the background. So again, it's just in the settings. If you go to 3D view, scroll down to the bottom, and uh, where is it? Use gradient, and then gradient low is going to be the one at the bottom, the color at the bottom, and gradient high is going to be the color at the top. So you could fade from blue to red if you so wish. <laughs> um, so yeah, another nice uh, visual uh, tweak. Uh, one other uh, view feature that they added was um, matte cap. You can view a matte cap in um, your 3D viewport now very easily by just going to your um, properties panel, scrolling down to the display uh, panel, and checking matte cap. So um, this is a little bit confusing with the cube, but if we add a monkey, uh, actually, let's add a spe sphere and give it a smooth shading. So now we've got this um, matte cap displaying, and this is really nice if you're sculpting. Uh, let's say dim light topology. Okay, and if we just decide to sculpt here. Um, we can really see where this is affecting. Now this is a little bit, uh, to choose a more, um, simple matte cap. How about that one? Red clay. Yeah. So you can really see what you're sculpting now. Um, and there were features like this in other 3D packages like, uh, ZBrush and, um, es like especially sculpting focused programs. Um, so now this feature is in Blender, and it's a really nice feature. I mean, you can now, like, see topology very, very easily. So yeah, nice, um, uh, matte caps. So let's move on to mesh, uh, editing that they, features that they added. And the first one is going to be vertex beveling. Um, they updated the vertex beveling and made it a lot better. Um, so shift, control, B will be vertex bevel and now you can scroll up and make multiple segments and if you don't use the bevel modifier um i'm sorry bevel tool a lot it's a great tool i mean uh look up i mean i just found how powerful it was um when i was watching some tutorials by alex telford and they're just it's it's awesome i mean like oh it's great it's great for um adding like sharpness when you've got a subdivision surface, just uh, go watch some of those. Um, so yeah, vertex beveling, which is great for modeling. And one other one they added is um, instead of ha uh, I edge slide a lot. It's probably the biggest tool I use in the Control E menu, and that's a little bit annoying to have to get to that every time. So now you can just press G G, and it'll edge slide which is another great feature. Um, this is gonna save me a lot of time. So, uh, yeah. Edge sliding is now faster and there's better vertex beveling. On to modifiers. Okay, so they added the um, Laplace Smooth Modifier. Laplacian or Laplacian Smooth Modifier. And well, I'm not really sure exactly what this thing is doing. It's very fun to play with. <laughs> so, like, you can really uh, caricaturize uh, objects and stuff. So, um, 
just this factor is the amount of characterization uh, characterization in whatever direction and this is sort of affecting the edges I think I'm not sure and then um, yeah you can choose which uh, axes to affect and um, you can choose vertex groups okay so another new one is the UV warp modifier and um, this one is a way to affect your UV map and move it in a direction and uh, while I'm not quite sure how it works um, all I can tell is that you've got to have two objects and the one it, they uh, work in relation to each other so if you move both it won't affect the UV map but if you move one it will the other it will you could rotate scale um, and I'm not sure exactly how this works but again I'd be willing to do a tutorial on it so make sure to request below if you want to learn more about this all right another cool feature um, another awesome feature actually is the new rigid body dynamics that you can do inside the um, animation viewport now you, s you can record animations in the game engine but it's a little bit more um, persnickety and it's a little bit harder to deal with um, and makes uh, like you'll have to switch between game engine and rendering and game engine and rendering it becomes a little bit of pain of a pain so uh, the new rigid body dynamics and there's also rigid body constraints um, which I will not go into depth now but uh, they are um, you can use them to like make breakable uh, rigid body animations so now if I press alt a and my screen recorder slowing it down a little but this thing is actually genuinely very fast um, and it's just simulating all these cubes and and now we can scrub through um, the easiest way to deal with this I found is to um, to edit it in the rigid body tools because uh, you can add them much faster instead of having to go rigid body active and then selecting all this stuff you can now just uh, let me just delete all these add a floor make it passive passive is going to be non-moving but it will be detected by detected by the um, uh, physics simulation and then we'll add another one and make this one active and uh, let's duplicate these guys and uh, drop them so yeah this is a great feature um, very easy to use uh, you can choose your collision type and um, you can even animate stuff so uh, yeah it's a great new feature uh, for physics simulations now a great cycles feature that has been added is hair rendering and I'm sorry for for this terrifying render I suck at hair um, whenever I try to do it, it always ends up yeah it's bad um, so yeah uh, we now have hair rendering and it's in the settings down in the uh, particle system instead of being in the materials settings uh, from before and actually I found that this one's a lot easier to work with um, than the old blender one um, so uh, because it's just more straightforward you s it's less settings and I think it makes more sense um, the other thing is uh, for, for some reason it's still considered experimental uh, so you in the feature set you have to ex um, select experimental instead of the supported uh, feature set and when you do you'll get the settings at the bottom and you'll just have to check that and you'll get all these awesome features so they've added previews to the uh, material settings 
So now you can preview your um, your uh, materials before you s set them on an object, and um, it's another nice uh, feature. And something interesting I found was if you stretch it out really wide, uh, it turns out it's just being rendered on a backdrop, and that's like a background. I don't know. That's interesting. Um, anyway, <laughs> that's me when I mess around, I'm like, ah, okay, but, um, yeah, so you can, it, it, use them all in real time, um, or as real as it can be, if you do insane settings, it's not gonna be able to be as fast. And the last feature I'm going, going over today is this new gradient feature in the weight painting. If you hold down alt and left click and drag um you will get a gradient to your mouse and um i think i i thought up a couple uses for this um like if you're trying to select just an arm and um so that's nice the only thing is it's alt left click and if you use the alt left click to navigate like i do because um the middle mouse on on this mouse is a little the middle mouse button is a little bit difficult to click, so I tend to use the alt um, left clicking. So this feature doesn't really work very well if you use the emulate three button mouse option. So those were the new features for Blender 2.66. I hope you liked this video. Make sure to click the thumbs up button below, and um, that would be nice if you shared it too. Thanks. Um, thanks for watching this Sebastian Kangaroo uh, screencast, and we'll see you all next time.